On October the 31st, 1517, Martin Luther posted 95 big questions which he believed faced the church of his day to a local church door in Wittenberg, Germany. 500 years later, I decided to post 95 new questions, one a week, to the web, questions which I believe the church must face in the 21st century. So, what is a Christian? In the local church that I grew up as part of, it was about saying the sinner's prayer. That's what got you in. That was the proof that you were born again, a real Christian rather than a fake one. In other churches that I knew of slightly different to ours, being a Christian was more about being filled with the Spirit, the evidence of which was that you could speak in tongues which I always worried that I couldn't do, but at the same time thought was a bit weird. For other churches, it turns out, it's more about being careful not to challenge the leader or to ask too many awkward questions. In others, of course, it's different altogether. It's about regular attendance, being at mass or confession, or about being christened. And sadly, in some still today, it's about not being divorced, not being a practicing gay, or gender non-binary, or, well, the list goes on and on. So back to the original question, what is a Christian? I think that it's pretty foundational to realize that Jesus never used, nor asked anyone else to use, the term Christian. But what's more, he never wrote a set of doctrines, started a denomination, or, I put it to you, intended to begin a new religion at all. Instead, as we've been exploring over the last few weeks, he simply demonstrated a different way of doing life, built around his principles of loving God and loving others the way we love ourselves, and he invited us to follow him in that. In fact, the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, tell us on 23 occasions that Jesus spoke to others about following him. And here's the thing. It turns out that originally the followers of Jesus were simply known as people of the way. People who identified with the way of life Jesus taught and demonstrated. In fact, the term Christian only appears three times in the entire Bible, and as I've already said, was never used by Jesus at all. Strangely, it was originally coined as a way of ridiculing Jesus' followers, invented by their opponents a decade or so after his death, with the specific intention of mocking the people of the way. The real problem is that not only did it stick, it somehow got transformed into a badge of honour, even though it's one which no one can quite define the meaning of. Jesus was, of course, born and bred a Jew, and he never seems to have shown any desire at all to abandon this faith, the faith of his fathers. Instead, he lived and taught his whole life as a Jew. But rather than being understood as a religion, Judaism, as Jesus knew, was always seen as a way of life in which people chose whether to walk or not. That's why, for instance, in chapter 30, verse 21 of the Old Testament book of Isaiah, the claim is made, this is the way, walk in it. And it's why in chapter 35, verse 8 of the same book, we read, a highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. It will be for those who walk on that way. Or why chapter 40 verse 3 speaks of a voice of one calling in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Now once you understand this context, Jesus' famous words, I am the way, the truth and the life, take on an, an extraordinary new dynamic and a subversive clarity. Following Jesus, it turns out, being a Christian, if you want to put it that way, isn't about religion and all its paraphernalia or about believing all the right doctrines. It's simply about a way of walking the road of life and doing it well. 
And neither is it anything to do with condemning those who never get to enjoy walking this way through life, to an unending torture in some kind of hell. But that's another story for another day. So, this is why, of course, the early followers of Jesus designated their faith as the way. You can read all about it throughout the book of the Acts of the Apostles. And it's why in Acts chapter 9, we're told that when Saul, who would later become known as the Apostle Paul, was still looking to wipe out all the followers of Jesus, he went to the high priest in Jerusalem to ask for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, he might take them as prisoners. Following Jesus was a revolutionary way of doing life back then and it still is today. It's not about belief in the sense of an ascent to a system of doctrinal do's and don'ts, but simply about trusting him enough to walk his way. Or, to put it differently, it's about letting his story shape our actions, our attitudes, our responses and initiatives. So for all the people who still insist on using the term Christian, I define it exactly that way. What do you think? And I'll leave you with a couple of questions. First, if, as I've suggested, following Jesus isn't about religion and all its paraphernalia, but simply about Jesus' way of walking the road of life, loving God, loving others, and loving ourselves, how do we start to build communities that echo that? And, as it seems the whole world is now stuck with the term Christian, is our best approach to try to redefine it or simply to dump it? I'll see you next week.